Block fam, welcome to today's episode. I like how you're starting this. What? I know they probably didn't hear me, but... I like how you're starting this. Why? Just 30 seconds ago, you were like, should I be filming this? <laughs> yeah, today, working on Goldzilla, because I want it for this weekend. You guys are probably not seeing this in chronological order, but this weekend is the camp out, and I want to ride my bike to the camp out at Forgotten Angels. Shady Surgeon, Shaylee, Lacey, Brapstar, all them. I told Chris, I'm like, hey, can we get my bike back up and running? Because we've been stripping parts off of it. We put a lot of the parts from Goldzilla onto the giveaway bike. So, P.S., if you guys don't know, we're giving away that Harley Davidson Lowrider ST over there. Enter for your chance to win over at blockheadmoto.com. Sign up, select a tier, and you're in. Blockheadmoto.com. Blockheadmoto.com. Yeah. For Goldzilla, one of the next things we were doing, uh, we've got uh, a couple different modifications to give it more power, naturally, not force induction. And one of those things that we have is an HPI tunnel ram intake. We also have heads over there for it, but since this weekend is coming up quick, we don't want to stress Chris out too much because well. we do heads, we're going to have to retune it. We are still going to have to retune it with this, but it's not going to be quite as extensive as if we do brand new heads for it. Well, so uh, this is spoiler alert, but there is so much more happening with this engine, so don't talk about stressing me out. Yeah. This whole thing's got to come stressing down. Stressing them out the before the weekend. Case. It's yeah. got new exhaust coming. It's got wheels are going to get done. I think we're going to drop the balancers. I'm not sure yet. I think we're going to try it with yours and see how it goes. I've heard not to. So, from, I have from too, but I've people. also ridden a couple without balancers and they were just fine. I heard they so, shaking themselves to death. Eh, we don't know till we try. <laughs> That is the point of this bike is to try and kill it. Well, we don't want to kill the rider and we don't we're not building this to kill it we're, we're, Oh, we were wanting to see what breaks naturally first by throwing more and more power at it And so that's kind of what we're doing right now Hopefully what we're throwing on there right now should give it more power So like I was saying we've got a uh, stuff here from horsepower Inc. We've got the uh, manifold which is the tunnel ram and then the new throttle body Obviously done in gold from them air cleaner coupler there and then we had 5.5 gram injectors on it We are going up to 7.1 gram injectors yep. still gonna be externally vented so we've got basically this bracketry setup and these lines from horsepower ink which are gonna go here and here and then we should be able to basically get it back up and running modify the tune a little bit and I should have it ready for the weekend so not not a massive change but just one you know that we should thought we should document just because that's what we do with this bike it's for science science so yeah, before I do go to this, obviously I can't get this front fairing painted. I do have to figure out a uh, headlight option as well. But we're gonna go ahead and get this stuff together and then we'll, uh, it'll probably be tomorrow just cause it's the end of day right now, but you guys will probably see us again tomorrow. So outfits will be changed. We'll be in the dyno room tuning it up to see what it does. Do we get an increase in horsepower and torque with the horsepower ink tunnel ram? I would assume so. It's much larger. But without the heads, I mean, I think the choke point's gonna be the heads at this point. I don't disagree at this point. Um, but it'd be good to see what we can get out of these heads as they would come out of the box. Yeah. When we're forcing as much as we can possibly force into it, basically. That exhaust is definitely a hindrance. Yes. And that is no knock on TBR. It, dude, it's, it's, it's a great, it's a great sounding pipe. I'm a big fan of it for the sound of it. Obviously, it's not the best performer. We did order an HPI pipe. So we have a horsepower ink pipe on the way we ordered it probably about 10 weeks ago. <laughs> so we don't get any special no, treatment. No, we're on we have list. to wait just as long as That's everybody why this else. It's taking so long. Yeah. Really amongst other things but so yeah, we do have an hbi pipe on the way and once that comes in that's when we'll do heads i think after the the heads we should probably tune it again see what kind of horsepower we get and then maybe what tear it down to I'd or do you want to just tear it down you want to just fully long. tear it down yeah. okay cool i trust you bro it's up to you zippers did the heads you got to be honest how long ago was that almost two years two years ago long time ago yeah unfortunately justin, the heads are just sitting there justin calls me the most patient person with modifications because like whenever people get them you want to throw them on your bike immediately but like i literally have stuff laying around we for... actually we actually had that head cut before the 590 was on the market yeah so that's how long ago it was but we had a cut for the 590 we did yeah and that was interesting because they didn't have all the specs they needed so i'm really curious to see what we get out of these heads and I don't, I can't tell anybody whether it's a stage one, two, three head, it doesn't matter. They set it up for what size we were going with, compression ratio and cam. We have a particular engine, a particular number we're after. Yeah. So we should be able to achieve that. And I'd love to find out how much we could achieve without the balancers to see just truly how much that's affecting things. Right. Versus with them. That's a lot of work. It's a lot of effort. 
So yeah, pretty much what we need to do from here, we went ahead and got the uh, stock throttle body off. Like I said, we had also taken off the uh, injectors, put them on that bike. We just removed the manifold. So we're gonna get to reassembling with the horsepower ink components and then uh, crank it up, see how it runs and get it tuned up. Really, I'm just gonna pee on it like you did my car. <laughs> I didn't pee on your car, bro. <laughs> Don't tell people that. <laughs> got it all together for the most part however we are missing a bolt for here basically missing the bolt that goes right there that will help to support here in the back seeing as this is our first experience with it we did want to give a couple points of potential constructive criticism for assembly and fitment so the bracket here it has spots for basically like two ears but the no, right. throttle body that we got back only has, has the one positions for those yeah, so as you guys can see, it's got the two ears to mount for here, but this one does, does not. Have not. Two ears. It only has the one. So no support on this side, which that single support is probably fine, but the bracket for it has the support for the other one too, in which it dips down. And we've basically like had to grind some of it off to have clearance for the throttle body. Almost touching on this part, but it is not quite, barely not touching. So we basically had to grind that off and then Chris hit it with some wrinkle black paint to match. And then also on this collar that basically joins up to the front side of the throttle body, kind of bevels in and then goes out to fit the filter. Whenever you put those screws in there, you can use a ball Allen, but you do risk scratching the actual collar that where it basically bevels out because these screws, they set within it underneath. There's not even like a direct line of sight to be able to get a tool in there. So we had to use like obviously a really skinny Allen. You could use something like that and uh, be okay but it's one of those things where like it could really easily be taken care of if there was what did you say like a little relief, it's the relief. Yeah. yeah if there was like a little relief cut into this like where there were the okay. screw locations it would still basically like be wide enough to make the seal between that and the filter element and still have more room for the screws and not having to potentially mar it other than that i mean obviously you have to assemble it in a correct order because if you basically tighten this up before tightening this up you're not going to have access so uh, yeah, it's one of those things. Pay attention as you're putting it all together. I think that's probably it, right? Why didn't we get this in gold? Oh yeah, so, and that's another thing. So we did obviously go a little extra to get the throttle body gold, but then we received the, the collar, obviously not in gold. If you could receive the collar right there in gold, I think that would just be like that nice little extra touch. Something that they could potentially do in the future. Also, it'd be really cool to have this gold as well, you know, because the whole theme of the bike is gold. So essentially what we're gonna have to do uh, is take this off and send it for gold plating or potentially make our own to say something and just kind of replace it so yep that's uh thoughts about all of it so far we do have to go to ace to get that final bolt so we're gonna go do that and uh bear back we'll return and we're back from ace hardware and lunch actually met with somebody potential big things incoming we'll keep you guys posted but we got the hardware bolts under here bolt here so that bolt basically sets well there. So yeah, next uh, step, now that we've got everything all hooked up, put the tank back down, connect the fuel line, injectors are in, throw some oh, O2s, tune it up, see what we do. See you guys in the dyno. See you guys. Joining us in the dyno room, we have Bagger Bro, Eric. out the room super quick but while you're in there pretty brutal so he's gonna be tuning all that out all the d-cell stuff so the 590 cam like we've got an sns 590 cam in it which is an incredibly high lift cam so the bike performs really well top end right it's a race cam essentially really high lift uh, the valves stay open a lot longer you're bringing in more air and the duration for the exhaust is a lot longer as well so you're pushing out more exhaust um, and then if the tune isn't just right what's going to happen is you're going to get that overlap like just a little tiny bit but what happens if the tune isn't just right you're going to have some of the like the valves are open still and um, that's where you hear the backfire the chassis tuned out so it's actually progressing a lot since you first started 
All right, guys, the bike ran out of gas, so I went, grabbed some more gas, and we're actually gonna go ahead and throw a uh, Trask top cover on it, since with this intake, we are now externally venting it instead of venting it into the transmission top cover like we did previously. So we got these vents here and here, go in there. And so we're- uh, to tell these motherfuckers every goddamn thing we do. Sometimes I like to not be transparent, but- Sometimes I'm gonna keep a motherfucker in the dark, treat him like a mushroom, feed him keep him in the dark. Wow. Apparently, <laughs> we're gonna put a Trask top cover to basically get this thing vented so that the pressure is all good. I've been seeing this a lot lately with M8s and doing stage twos, basically having some pressure issues, especially at the breathers. So since we do have the breathers open and they're venting externally, we did have that previous mod. We're gonna go ahead and throw this on there to make sure that the pressures are all good. And then we will continue tuning it. Why is it none of their business? They should know. People like to follow this you know bike. Here, if you want them to have some about their business, Everybody tell him how small his tire is. Why you gotta go there, damn oh, bro? You, why we gotta go here? Why he's gotta go why like? Why gotta go here? Why are you just, why, why are you attacking me? <laughs> You're why finishing my sentences now. Don't Aww. come at me. So sweet, bro. <laughs> <laughs> if I could do wheelies up a fucking wall, this would be the fucking bike to do it on. I'd go all the way up the wall, off the top of the fucking building, and just let the bike fucking free. Boosh. And I'd be like, oh, too bad, smash. So he's sitting here talking to the bike saying, why do you have to be so f***ing temperamental? How many bikes he it's takes fun. into the dyno room and he's like able to dyno through it, no problem. But for some reason, Goldzilla- Every time, yeah. every time there's something. In the beginning, we couldn't keep a tack signal. And whether we pulled off the wire, we went off the spark wire. It didn't f***ing matter, we couldn't keep the signal. We finally got that squared away by who the f*** knows why, because we didn't change anything. It just decided to rectify itself. The first time we tried to tune it, didn't tune right. Second time was troublesome. We did get good numbers, but it was troublesome. And now all we did was put this on and for whatever reason, it threw the front and rear cylinder way the f off in certain zones. So bad, it won't even idle, will it? Nope. <laughs> it's so lean, it's like <laughs> doop, doop. <laughs> Godzilla has given him a ton of And then my OG Sportster oh, that we built. Oh, let's not even talk about that We're not even done with that thing yet. Whoa. And that gave him a lot of trouble as well. That turd. God, that so for some terrible. reason, all of my personal bikes <laughs> just give him such a hard time. Just like me. Just yours. <laughs> just yours. Same sports to same setup on somebody else's. In and out, no problem. Yeah. So how many low riders do we do here? All the time. Yeah. In and out. Actually, you're not as much of a pain in the ass <laughs> as you're talking about. <laughs> oh, hey guys. Bagger bro here. We're looking at Goldzilla, the million dollar low rider S. We we're just talking mad shit about it. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 like tuning in, yeah. and just working on it in general. Yeah, yeah it's fing haunted in its own way. All right, boys and squirrels, trash cover on. Back to the dyno. RPM, you are starting at 130 foot pounds of torque, right? Yeah. Incredibly smooth line, obviously climbs for both of them, horsepower and torque, and then they intersect between five and 55. This isn't meant to be like one of those those runs. Like we, we basically wanted to get the intake on it so that I could ride it to the camp out, Forgotten Angels. So that's where we're going pretty much after this. I'm gonna ride the bike home tomorrow morning, hop on it, go meet Eric. But it's up, it's running. It's still a fucking beast. If you guys want your bikes tuned, if you want your bikes built, whatever it is, hit us up, blockheadgarage.com, fill out the form. We'll get you guys on the schedule. How many tunes have we done in this dyno room since we started? Or on this dyno since we started? I'd have to look at the license count, but I want to say it's right near 100 now. 100, that's we a lot. We did like five more last week, so we might be a little, we might be about 100 now. Yeah, that's definitely a lot. All right. So we'll do a run in fifth, see what it looks like, and then go. 
Alright guys, welcome to the riding portion of uh, this new HPI Tunnel Ram install video. I will say one of the big things that I've noticed with riding this bike, the, the distance that I have, it has just changed so much. And the reason it's changed so much, obviously, like whenever we got the new 70 millimeter HPI Tunnel Ram intake on it, 7.1 gram injectors, and a new tune, like the characteristics of the bike changed. I mean, this is this is basically my main bike. Cruising, getting up to speed without like going wide open throttle. The bike is much, much smoother. The rideability, it's one of those things that I talk about pretty often, is the overall rideability of this bike has improved dramatically. Power numbers wise, the power numbers did shift a bit. Like I said in the very beginning, I wasn't really expecting a big change in the power numbers. And the reason I wasn't expecting a big change is because the heads are still the choke point for this bike wanting more air. In the Dynagraph, basically the horsepower and the torque line, so they're still climbing kind of towards the end, but you can see where it starts like running out of air. And so part of the solution to getting more air, more fuel, right, into the 131 stage four, seeing how far we can push this thing for science, is to have a larger air cleaner or intake on it, so horsepower ink. I didn't expect a ton more power because we didn't change the heads, but we do have heads, like we said earlier, uh, from Zipper's Performance that have specifically been made for the cam that we have in this bike. S&S 590 race cam. Incredibly high lift cam, so that's why in the upper RPM on this bike, it performs incredibly well. It just, you can feel it turn on. And, you know, I'll do a poll here in a little bit, but yeah, one of the big things that I did want to really focus on, the HPI Tunnel Ram, you know, it looks great. It's definitely gotten a lot of uh, questions online as well as in person. People come up and they're like, oh my God, that intake, bro, what is that? It's definitely like, you know, something different that's out there, which I obviously enjoy. But then the, the performance of it is what we were mostly focused on. It's, it's why we make these videos of, you know, doing this incrementally modifying the bike. You know, we're not just like throwing everything at it at one time because we want to be able to see, does it like dramatically increase power? Is it worth the bang for the buck? Yes, it is worth the bang for the buck if you modify everything else down the line if it needs it. Also, you guys might notice a check engine light here. I'll go ahead and point that out. The rear O2 sensor is uh, Dunzo's. <laughs> So we gotta get the rear O2 sensor replaced, which is totally normal. O2 sensors do fail, especially if you're, you know, pulling them off, putting them on, tuning the bike, you know, changing stuff a lot, running race gas. You know, O2 sensors are one of those things that they do end up uh, failing. I almost wanna say, like a, like a clutch, you know, it's a wear and tear part. You're gonna have to replace your clutch eventually. O2 sensors, kind of similar, uh, but they last a lot longer usually, especially if you leave them alone, they'll last a long time. But you know, we don't like to leave our bikes alone. So, especially Goldzilla, man, this thing has been on the lift, on the operating table so many times in the dyno room. This is the one we use for science the most, I think. Back to the intake though and the tune. So Chris, man, he is an absolute magician when it comes to dyno tuning. And he spent a good amount of time extra on this bike he basically could have stopped and been like here you go go ride it to forgotten angels because that's that was my goal is to basically get the bike back up and running that i could ride it out to forgotten angels you know i wanted i wanted my bike this is the bike that i ride and do distance with so we got it back up and going it's running freaking great because he went above and beyond with tuning and he was really focusing on the low end and one of the really cool things on the bottom end of the dynagraph is you guys will see it's a it's a smooth line there is no more two to one torque dip and when you have a two to one exhaust especially with like an exhaust like i have on this one that is a shorty shorty pipes are a little harder to tune and they're going to have a bit more of a torque dip so dude yeah i think a combination of intake larger throttle body and manifold plus injectors he was able to tune that out which is super cool man it's and you can definitely feel it it's it's not as on off anymore so where i used to kind of say like damn goldzilla it's too much the reason that it felt too much is because it's like in the lower rpms it was just kind of like meh whatever like it didn't like riding in the lower rpms and you could feel it it wants to go fast so now it still wants to go fast but it's also comfortable riding in these lower rpms it's not like you know as on off you know that's me obviously like pulling being twitchy on throttle but like it used to be just like you know it'd be like here and then all of a sudden you know it'd be like there and so that's it's all smoother now and that's because of chris 
and him just absolutely killing the tune on this thing. He did such a great job. Big shout out to Chris. A lot of people, man, they, they end up going with like flash tuners. So it's kind of one of those things that we've continued to say, like if you're doing a stage one, yeah, it's okay. But anything beyond that, like you're gonna wanna go with something that doesn't have a can map. You're gonna wanna tune like specifically for your motorcycle. And you will be just amazed, like the amount of responses that we've gotten from people that come in with can maps and they're like, yo, like I hate the way my bike rides. It just feels weird. It doesn't have power it falls flat in certain spots they'll take it and they'll ride it you know and they'll come back and they just man thanking us up and down it's a brand new motorcycle kind of stuff so a tune really freaking matters so next up for goldzilla is the heads and i know whenever we do the heads and we upgrade those to those zippers performance heads to flow some more air into this beast we're also going to be taking it down to the crank getting it lightened balanced pinned possibly like razor edged i think he calls it uh yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I can't remember who we're going with. Potentially Dark Horse, but... Red Mountain. <laughs> so that's what's next up for Goldzilla. I do have a couple other parts. I mean, obviously, I just finished the front fairing install. It's up and running. Uh, we've got a different bracket coming in with a different company, so I'll have some adjustability to it if needed. And we're going to be doing some carbon fiber on the bike. Just a little couple accents and stuff. And then I think after that, or while it's down and the crank is uh, apart, the cases are split, I'll uh, probably be getting it custom painted. It's one of those unfortunate things, man. Like the next time that Goldzilla is down, it's going to be down for a while. Again, freaking miss riding this bike, though, man. Man. Lots of other projects, but man, this is always like, she's my go-to, you know? I can love this bike. Somebody was asking me if I'd ever sell it, and I was like, no. Anyways, hope the episode has been insightful. Guys, if you have any questions on the uh, Horsepower Rank Tunnel Ram, let us know. If you guys want to order them, you can get them through us. So head over to blockheadgarage.com, fill out the form, let us know that you're wanting one, and we'll get you sorted out. And I mean, that's pretty much for any other motorcycle part. We don't have like a website yet that you can like go and buy stuff on, but you can buy stuff through Blockhead Moto. Just fill out the form, blockheadgarage.com, tell us what you're looking for. That'll put you in touch with one of our team members, and yeah, they'll basically sort out an order for you. And Anyways, if you guys do have any questions on the uh, HBI Tunnel Ram, the tune, we're using a Dynajet tuner. I'm super happy with it right now, and it's just gonna get even better from here, which is crazy to think how far it's come from just being, uh, you know, a stock 114 to be riding a stage two, to being like, oh, hell yeah, let's do the stage four, which led to Chris and I working together, and it's just been thing after thing after thing. It's just gone through this whole journey, this metamorphosis, and I think we're kind of at the, the home stretch of like where it's, all right, cases, heads, after that, done oh and paint you guys know it's never actually done anyways hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did do me a favor hit the like button lets youtube know that we're doing a good job helps to recommend it to other people that might be interested in motorcycle content as well if you guys are new here and you do enjoy motorcycle content do me a favor also hit that subscribe button hit the bell icon also so it sends you notifications of future uploads and activity be part of that bell yeah squad until next time ride safe stay vigilant peace